things were not nation globally but in the midst of it you know what God is saying God says the covenant I have with you is not determined by what is happening outside the covenant I have with you is not determined by the economic situation of your country the covenant I have with you is certain it doesn't change once you play your part I will play my part. Let's try on our feet this morning. Let's just thank him. Let's exalt his name. He's a covenant keeping God. He doesn't change. Times change. Events change. People change. Government change. But his covenant does not change. Oh, let's give him all the glory. Let's give him all the honor. Yes. Yahweh. Covenant keeping. covenant over your head and that's why what affect others cannot affect you i want that to sink in your mind thus hour. i want you to just thank him i want you to appreciate him. that yes you kicked hard for me i well ahead of time lord thank you lord lord i give you all the glory i give you all the honor because you are a covenant keeping god lord i worship you Lord, thank you, Lord. Balos, Badalias, Jesus, Talia, Dalia. Lord, thank you, Father. Lord, we give you all the glory. You are the covenant keeping God. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, our Father and our God, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, because you had us in mind. I thank you for the theme for the month of August. God's covenant of prosperity. Thank you, Father, for all the understanding you're going to give unto us within this period. Thank you, Father, because we will understand 
and we will walk in it and we will begin to see you walk in our lives thank you father we ask to god as we receive your engraved word this hour let lights break forth let there be understanding lord let there be healing let there be restoration do the things only you can do and we'll return all the glory to you thank you father In jesus mighty name we are prayed amen please have your seats in god's presence hallelujah part of the things that god assured us this month i was listening to baba deboy yesterday give a testimony he said there are some testimonies that are frightening when he said so i did not really understand how can testimony be frightening but when he gave one practical example i said wow testimonies can actually be frightening he said some years back that they were having a crusade big program in the national stadium in Suru Lerin. that the crowd was massive and whatever you had said there was this particular woman that was sitting by a man that has gutter that the way the gutter was the gutter covered the man that even before you see the face of the man the first thing you will notice is the gutter and he said god just gave him a word that there's someone in this place there's a it's like a rope that is tied around your neck that god is saying that that rope disappears now you know when you have somebody like that by your side what will you do you will look he said mainly the woman looked it didn't disappear that the woman was so scared that she trekked from through Lere to Onikpan before she remembered she left her car behind in Suru Lere. I pray for somebody in this place. The kind of testimonies that you have never witnessed in your life, the kind of testimony that will make the chronic unbelievers around you to want to serve the God that you serve, that is what God will deliver to you. In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! God's covenant of prosperity. Uh, God's covenant of prosperity is not determined by your background. That is why it's covenant. By the reason of my profession i know what agreement means i say you enter into an agreement to somebody i know what it means but when a covenant is inserted into the agreement it is not just something that you can change anyhow and that's why i want to plead with you surely those of you that are not yet married you know in those days when you are going out as a non-believer you are doing boyfriend and girlfriend and lust which you call love is shocking you you said then you want to enter into covenant that i will marry you those that are older you understand what i'm saying then you now bring blood you do incision say you already lick the blood let me lick the blood Those are one of the strongest covenants that you can ever think of. I want to plead with you. Don't tie yourself down. Like I explained many weeks back. When you get married, you will know that love alone cannot conquer marriage. Yes. So, when we talk about covenant, we are not just talking about mere agreements. We are talking about strong vows. Very, very strong one. And let's look at what 
that is what god and i want to please i want to plead with you you are here you are not married when you sleep with a person what you have done is to enter into a covenant with that person i know what i'm saying i grew up as a deliverance minister and i know that one of the toughest covenant to break is that covenant please i'm begging you and if you are married you are into adultery that's what you are doing also entering into covenant with somebody that you are not legally married to praise the lord the lord will grant you understanding in jesus name let's open our bible to genesis chapter 12 we'll read from verses 1 to 3 genesis and 12 verses 1 to 3 and the lord said to abraham get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that i will show you i will make you a great nation i will bless you i make your name great and you shall be a blessing i will bless those who bless you and i will curse him who curses you and in you all the families of the heart shall be blessed let's also look at galatians chapter 3 the book of galatians chapter 3 galatians chapter 3 we we'll read verses Twenty-nine. I read from verse twenty-nine. Galatians. Sorry. Let me read from verse twenty-six so that we will get it very well. Twenty-six to twenty-nine. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus. For as many of you. as we have baptized into christ have put on christ there is neither jews nor greek there is neither slave nor free there is neither male or female for you are all one in christ and if you are in christ then you are the seed you are abraham's seed and here according to the promise you are what you are abraham's seed and heir according to the promise let's also read told john told john and verse two told john is just one chapter beloved i pray that you may prosper in all things and be in earth just as your soul prospereth. the topic we are going to be looking at this morning is understanding god's covenant of prosperity understanding god's covenant of prosperity like i said when i was introducing the topic that covenants are not just mere agreement. For God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo said, covenants of prosperity is not a promise that you pray and claim. It is not a prayer that you will just pray, pray on agreement and it will come upon you. God's covenant of prosperity is a duty that you play your part and automatically God plays his own part so one of the things that we are believing God for this season 
is that the Lord will open our eyes to know what the prosperity entails. What must we do? What are the details of the covenant? And what is expected of me so that God can also play his part? God's covenant of prosperity does not answer us to prayer alone, but I hope it answers to light. The Bible says the entrance of the word of God brings light and understanding to the simple. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You know, like the example I usually give. I say, what is the essence of it? The key to opening a door is given unto you. And you stood before the door in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Door, open. Door, break. Door, die. Is that necessary? What are you supposed to do? Just take the key and do what? Go to the door and do what? And open the door. And you do what? And you enter. So that's what we are saying. Until you discover the keys, you will just be laboring in vain. Mm. God's covenant of prosperity. It's a covenant because it's permanent. It's binding on God. As I study that Genesis chapter 12, I realized that when God gave Abraham that promise, in itself it wasn't a covenant. It was a promise. But you know what? Gradually, as Abraham stepped out in faith to obey and God sees his sincerity in obedience the relationship developed into a covenant Genesis chapter 15 when Abraham was getting worked up I don't have a child I'm this old God said look this is what I want you to see. Come on, said. Let me show you some things. He entered into a covenant with him. When he got to Genesis chapter 17, he said, Walk before me and be perfect. He gave him the covenant of circumcision. And when he got to Genesis chapter 22, after the birth of Isaac, God tested him to see whether Abraham will honor the gifts more than him. That's the, that is that is the that is that is the caution i want to caution some of us here when god sees that you will honor what he blesses you with more than him he also will be cautious to give you more you know one thing i've discovered about god the little period i worked with him at least by the grace of god i worked with him for over 30 years now not go and come continuously to the glory of his name I discovered that when God have intention of blessing you let me use what you understand for example about 10 million what it does to you first is to give you 50,000 the way you utilize that 50,000 is what will determine whether it will go forward but you know where most of us fail we we'll get stuck if you pass that face the second level gives you hundred thousand that's where you get stuck why because you are not faithful so it will be difficult for him to do what to proceed the reason why most of us are not working in this covenant like you will discover in the weeks ahead is because the little god has given unto you you have not been faithful let me give you a practical example many years ago god helped us as a family after much years of struggling we we had one million in treasury bill i'm telling you a practical example i don't know whether my wife will remember and i traveled and what have you blah 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 the way i blew that money it was long again before i could gather a million and today when i sit back i look i said ah 
maybe if i spend that money very well financially i will not be where i am today you know why god will not give you what will harm you you know what jesus christ said he said how many of you will your son ask for bread you will not give your son snake do you know there are some blessings that god will bless you that will be harmful to you that is it because if you gives you much more than you can handle told john chapter one i told john one three i want to he said beloved i wished above all things that that may prosper and be in head even as what your soul prosper did you get one thing is the prosperity of your soul that will determine what god will handle unto you is anybody lost is anybody lost no so if your soul is not growing the tendency is there that god will be careful in genesis chapter 22 god tested abraham to see whether god whether he will actually prefer actually give more attention to the gifting that god gave him than him and to the glory of god abraham did not fail you know what happened god couldn't restrain himself again he said i saw i swore i swear by myself that was what god said he said in blessing i will bless you i said wow wow he said in blessing i will bless you your descendants i will bless them because abraham proved that he can be trusted if you know if you cannot be trusted in the little that god has committed unto you you don't expect him to commit more the sureness of his covenant of prosperity for everyone that is born again is as the daylight in fact he told he told he told david he said only if my covenant with their light can be broken that is when my covenant with you will be broken that there will not be a seat from your lungs to stand on the throne of israel that is how powerful have you seen a day that the day did not break have you seen it have you seen a day that the day did not break that you woke up in the morning and there was no breaking forth is the covenant with god he told he told noah he said as long as the head remained he said seed time and harvest time will not cease one of the one of the topics we're going to treat within this period is your seasons understanding the seasons of life mm. there are seasons you have plenty just like what happened in what happened in egypt they had seven years of plenty it's your season of plenty that will determine what will happen to you in the seasons of lack i just gave you one example now bam one million i was so happy yeah but i wasted it and i paid for it too because one thing with god is god is teaching you a lesson and you fail to learn what will it do it will leave you you will learn the hard way now where god is bringing this topic to us is that we will not learn the hard way amen and that's why reassuring us that in spite of the way things are in this country in spite of the way things are globally that if you walk in his covenant of prosperity you are assured bible says but the part of the just is as a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day is that when men are saying that they cast him down what shall you be saying say there's a lifting up why your understanding of the covenant of prosperity that is it is 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 you see when you talk about this covenant i'm not persuading god to do what he says he will do but by god's grace i'm trying to let you understand what it's all about what you need to do to walk in this path covenant of prosperity 
a good understanding because if you don't understand it you will not know and like i said god someone said he said what you need is for the light to do what to break forth he said it was when the light broke forth when he saw the light that he said i can't never before he saw the light and even when people were mocking him i was listening to a message and Baba Deboe was ministering in Kinalan, Faith Abanaku, and he was saying, Thank God for the day of little beginning. He said, I know Bishop when he was struggling with Volkswagen. And I know, I wasn't there, but I know what they would do. They would show that Volkswagen. And everybody would laugh. He said, Anytime he visits him there, he said he used to pray that God let this Volkswagen get back to Kaduna safely. You know that Dr. Ajayi used to tell us his testimony. He said, in those days, when he's driving out of this church, when you greet him, he will do his hair like this. You know why? The Volkswagen was driving there. He said, if he removes his hand from the gear, the thing will turn to another one <laughs> by itself. Things were that bad. But as the man of God walks, discovered had understanding of the covenant god's covenant of prosperity and has begun to walk in it we are talking about his story now i have the assurance in my spirit that god with proper understanding of this team god will raise movers and shakers of our society from this assembly in the name of jesus see you cannot walk in god's covenant of prosperity and not prosper let me drop this for you the covenant of prosperity we are talking about is not determined by the profession that you do if you are educated it will give you an advantage a great that was the advantage that Paul, the apostle, had over Peter. It was an advantage because he was learned. And that's why you could see today that he wrote three, three quarters of the New Testament. Why? He was learned. But the covenant we are talking about, whichever profession you find yourself, whichever area of skills you have found yourself, when you are walking in the covenant of prosperity, has God laid it down? God will soon prosper you. Point in case. Joseph in Egypt was a slave. But what did the slave master, what did he say about him? He said, I discovered since you join us, things have changed for us. The Bible says that when he got to prison, he prospered in prison. That's what we are talking about. So it's not a ah if say i go school if not because of this thing i'm doing no whatever you are doing if you have a proper understanding of the covenant of prosperity that we are talking about whatever you are doing whichever profession you belong to god in need will do what prosper you and that's why we could talk about daniel daniel was taken as slave but the bible says that it was so relevant that in the reign of four different kings daniel was the chief consultant to those kings it was that relevant prosperity why because he was working in the covenant of prosperity i i did a research and as of 2010 2010 there was a write-up that came out in jerusalem post and he was saying that the Jewish by last year's uh, population the Jewish nation was about 30 million plus the people in Israel they're just about 6 million
the founder of Facebook, Jewish. You can go on and on. Naming these powerful people. But I they are children of what? Covenant. They are working in the Abrahamic covenant. Everywhere they get to, you see them, they are different. That's the grace that they are working. Israel, we are told, is landlocked. What do you mean by landlord? They don't have regular rain, this and that, and what have you. But when you talk about a Greek, a Greek, a Greek, you can't just do them like this. When Israel sneezes, America wake up, as powerful as America is. Do you know why it's like that? They are children of covenant. And that's what the Bible says that by the reason of our birth as what as christians that's what the bible is making us realize in galatians chapter 3 verse 29 he said we became seed we became inheritance of the promise by our relationship with jesus you know some of us will sing the song abraham blessings are mine Abraham blessings are mine. That's what we are saying. If Abraham blessings are truly yours, then let's see it work out. I'm trusting God. I'm believing God. That within this season, within this season, within this season, God will lift people from abject poverty. Lift them literally. To a period of abundance yeah. I'm believing God that God will lift people from you know you know you know you know some people pretend that they are rich they are not rich <laughs> they are not rich there was a day many years ago I preached a message in this church you know categorizing levels there are some people they are very very poor even the poor people call them poor there are some people that they are poor some people are comfortable you can eat you dress well you are comfortable there are some people they are rich mm. there are some people they are wealthy but you know the greatest level there are some people they are flourishing when we finished that service the brother came to me he said he said pastor you have told us the level we are now <laughs> so i believe god whichever level you are now based on what the bible says in proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 he said but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day whichever level you are now God will literally lift you in the name that is above every other name to where you ought to be. In the name of Jesus! Amen. Covenant, God's covenant of prosperity. Do you know one thing? One of the things I want us to realize also is that there is prosperity and there is prosperity. Hmm... The devil also prosper people, Abi. And the devil prosper people now. He won't lie. He prosper people. He makes them rich. He makes them have all the power. He makes them believe that we cannot do without you. That's why somebody will give church money and will expect the pastor to come and be taking direction from him. Say so we are the one that is financing that church. You are too small. Bishop said, he said it's worth 150 US dollars. He said that's an insult on God. He said it's worth Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Mm, that's, the, that's it. Praise God. 
That's what God says. So you're worth. But you know one thing? Until you align with the covenant, you cannot benefit from the covenant. The devil blesses people. Right. But you know the difference? The devil's agenda of blessing people is in line with his main agenda. What is his main agenda? John chapter 10 verse 10 a the enemy came to steal to kill ah to destroy that's why have you ever seen a crusade that they organized that look today we are doing crusade we want to recruit armed robbers have you ever have you ever witnessed that kind of crusade oh okay have you seen a crusade that they said today today we are doing a crusade is court members that we want to organize have you seen that crusade no he doesn't do his own like that he doesn't do his own like that what he does is to lure you lure you mm, he will lure you he'll tell you that uh, don't you see the way that brother is that brother is prospering don't you see don't you want to be like him ah, now wow this brother i said you go and meet sir hey you say you want to you feed him ah, i feed him now okay let's meet at social time and he said we are going for a meeting it's meeting meeting but it's not for everybody it's just for some people and when they get to that meeting they tell you said ah you want to prosper you want to be rich very simple this is what to do this is what to do ah, just like that very very simple and you say you do it ah the business just say, ah is it go is everything like this yeah 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 and you're enjoying it. Ah, God punish poverty. So you're enjoying it. And after some period, they said, eh, hey, it's your turn now. <laughs> it's your turn. It's your turn. You know what you do? You have to donate your mother. Say, oh, God forbid. Say, ah, all these things that you have been enjoying, you think it's free? One of the things that the devil does, the devil don't give you anything for free. If he gives to you riches, he will collect it back. Yeah, because what? He, his main agenda is John chapter 10 and 10, uh, John chapter 10, 10 B, uh, 10 A, to steal, to kill, and what? To destroy. That is his main agenda. And so nothing, if you are hearing this message and you are involved in Yahoo Yahoo, Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, Or oh, somebody is telling you that come and push money here, you will double it. Or oh, you know what you are doing. You know what you are doing. That you cannot stand before the people of God to testify. Even though you have some change in your pocket. You are just deceiving yourself. You are deceiving yourself. Mm. Or oh, you know you are sitting there you are hearing me you are doing baba jebu i've never seen anybody i have some staffs one day my office was my former driver i said well we we're looking for one of the staffs you know what he went to do he now went to one place you know i was just outside the office i was watching he now went to the one place i just saw him go to that place and i the symbol there is betty when when i said so, so you say you did do this thing he said no he went i said why did you go and check he said i don't do it but at times they will bring number i said ah ah i've never seen someone hmm, that becomes a millionaire and stays as a millionaire with betty it's just nonsense in inverted comma you don't have sense in your head that's what you are doing you know the way they do it so when you win you palm this you palm this you win when you win do you make anything out of the wins that you what does the devil tell you put it back you will win more and when you put it back you will lose premiership has started now mm -hmm. that's why you will never have savings why because it's not the way of god that is not the prosperity that we are talking about is the prosperity from the devil yeah it even though you don't agree but that's the truth anything you do that you cannot stand before people and testify that this is the way god blesses me is not of god is of the devil 
Because I know what? The agenda of God is in John chapter 10 and verse 10b. But the Son of Man has come that you have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible says it's only God that make it rich and added no sorrow to it. What God is doing for us within this period is to show us his blueprint on God's covenants of prosperity. It's for you to take. You can decide to continue your ways. But at the end of the day, the results will show. I tell people, choice is for you to make. The consequence, you don't determine the consequence. When you make a choice, the consequence flows naturally. The covenant of prosperity. God's covenant of prosperity for us is to prosper us. To lead us to an expected end. By God's grace, next week we'll be looking at the details of God's covenant of prosperity. What are the details? What is the need for me? What must I do? And the weeks ahead we'll be looking at it. What must I do to walk in this covenant? One thing I can assure you is that when you begin to walk in the covenant, even though it might not be showing now, but it will show ultimately. But you must start working in it first. You look at what I said. You must start it first. Because until you start it, God will not change his mind because of you. But one thing I want to assure you that as many that are willing to take this covenant work, God is willing to do what? To prosper you beyond your expectation. Just like the promises, for every promise that God gives, God gives conditions. So he says, salvation is free. But in the real sense, salvation is not free. It has been paid for. What you think is free is the credit that salvation gives unto you. Praise God. The covenant. But you know the most important thing? You cannot inherit from a family that you don't belong to. God's covenant of prosperity is an inheritance of the saints. So if you are not a member of the family, you cannot inherit from the family. Except if they give you what? They just give you small, small change. By mercy, they said, okay, let's will this to you. But ordinarily, you are not entitled to, to the inheritance of the family. Let's bow down our hands. Are you a member of the family? To entitle you to receive part of the covenant. Are you here this day? You are hearing me? Like I said, you cannot inherit from a family you don't belong to. Are you saying, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus? You want to be initiated to the family so that you can enjoy the benefits of the prosperity that we are talking about. Wherever you are, I want to personally pray with you. Wherever you are, just lay your right hand on your chest, on your heart. Ah.
of your life to God that is the big that is what initiates you into the family if you are not a member of the family you cannot benefit from the family if you have prayed that prayer just wherever you are rest on your feet you are laying your hands by your chest I can see one or two of you praying just rest on your feet and I'll pray with you wherever you are oh only set of people that want to pray for before I round up this session is that you are in this place you know that what you do, let me put it bluntly you cannot stand before God's people to testify that this is what you do even if the devil is prospering you in that business and you are saying today pastor I want you to pray for me because I want to be properly aligned to this covenant of prosperity. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and I'll grow with you. Together we ask for God's mercy. That God should have mercy upon you. And God will realign you. And you might need counseling. Wherever you are, just lift up your hands and we'll pray with you. Wherever you are, lift up your hands and we'll pray with you. And some of you, there's a nudging in your spirit, but you are resisting it. The only thing God can just do is for you to hold up so that you'll be delivered. What you do now is it calls to Yahoo Plus. Mm, that's what you do. And you pretend that you're a child of God. God wants to help you, God wants to deliver you. Lift up your hands. I'm waiting for you. I will pray with you wherever you are and God will deliver you. Father, thank you, Lord. I want the church to rise. We are going to pray this prayer point. Oh, shit. For those of us that we are around, on Wednesday we pray this prayer and I want us to pray this prayer again today. What is the prayer point? God, O oh Lord, grant me supernatural access into the secret of your covenant of prosperity. Mm. Mm. The difference between a winning Christian and a losing Christian is light. When light comes into darkness, it makes things that are hidden to be plain. I want you to pray that prayer. Say, Oh God, grant me supernatural access into the secrets of your covenant of prosperity. Open your mother and begin to pray. Open your mother and pray. Sakabosh, Le Zakaria Kaskotoli Akarosh. Barazo Zola Santa Likarika Sotolia Rosho Kalia Babosh. I don't say you should just, I say you should pray. Pray. Children, children, just pray that the Lord will open you up. You are hearing this at a, at a tender age, which is good for you. 
that the Lord will open you up in the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord God Jehovah, open me up, Lord. Grant me, grant me supernatural access.